My old friend has returned. Look, Frankie's back. Ah, come on over here and give this brute her due. Ah, oh, wow. Yes, 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 yes. Ah, what? What? You brought your father to see me? <laughs> what? That's insane. Get it, human creatures? It is a screwdriver. <laughs> Bolts, get it? <laughs> it looks like you've had some fine tuning since I've seen you last. Mm. What? What's what's up with that? A psychiatrist? Because you had a scrollos! <laughs> oh, Frankie, you still got it! <laughs> you always have me in stitches! Oh, yeah, you are always in stitches, too. <laughs> and, and what? You have been working for Microsoft? They needed a new mobile hardware platform? Well, that is over my head. <laughs> it's so good to have you back, my fiend. And to welcome Frankie back, we have come up with a new music mayhem segment called Frankie's Funk. Ooh! Some of the best horror rock and roll on the web. And with me and Frankie, you need to check this out. Today on Frankie's Funk is Frankenstein Ladies by the Cadillacs! Tonight you shall meet the Frankenstein monster! Wait! He's already here! <laughs> Let's dance, Frankie! Don't make no fool of me!
every night at sunset. Chick is right. This is awful silly stuff. Come on, take it all out. Wow! And we out, Chick! Come on! Samantha, come on! Wait a minute! The nation's top comics, Abbott and Costello, petrified but hilariously. Stop! Plus the dangerous and terrifying Wolf Man, played by Lon Chaney. Plus that fiend out of a nightmare, the vampire Batman, Count Dracula, played by Bela Lugosi. Plus the most dreaded creature of them all, the Frankenstein Monster, played by Glenn Strange. Plus a couple of luscious but designing females, in the spookiest laugh fest on record. Taking the break and sipping some juice. <laughs> hey, Frankie, what's the muscle's favorite drink? Demon aid. <laughs> what's the hardest thing about making mustard soup? Stirring it. <laughs> oh, what is Frankie's favorite dish? It's human beans. <laughs> Plus the little ice cream on the side. <laughs> Master who ate uranium? Uh -huh. He got atomic achy! <laughs> oh, Frankie, all of this talk is making me hungry. You want to go down to the grocery store and pick up some munchies? <laughs> uh -huh. Igor, go and get me what I crave. If 
If you want a better orange soda, made with more natural orange flavor than ever before, try Shasta. It's got the bright color, the sweet smell, and the great taste of oranges. Shasta, it's the orange soda that can make anybody happy. New from Dean Koontz, one man defied nature. One experiment changed the world. One legend never dies. Dean Koontz is Frankenstein, lost souls. The war against humanity has begun. Hello, human creatures. Join me, Misty Brew, at the Cape Comic Con, April the 17th through the 19th at the Osage Center in Cape. My fiend, Wade Moore, from Brainstorm Laboratory, has created my very own Misty Brew action figure. It comes with a base and everything, because you know, I am all about that base, about that base. No treble, I'm all about the base. <laughs> Once on a midsummer day, all the mice and birds of the fields gathered together in celebration. A year had passed, and not a single cat had prowled the countryside to disturb their peace and security. Haunts this place. It's Frankenstein's cat.
needed. Help is needed. The monster is on the loose again. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Can this be the champion of the helpless? Why, it's Mighty Mouse! <laughs> insatiable curiosity, nor went further into the unknown than the unforgettable Baron Frankenstein. So infamous were his exploits that his name stands forever as a symbol of all that is shocking, unspeakable, forbidden. Thus, in our day, any story which chills the soul and freezes the blood is truly a tale of Frankenstein. Now join us in the mystery, the excitement, and the stimulation that comes when we tell a story so weird, so dark, so harrowing, that it deserves to be called one of the many Tales of Frankenstein. I would get soaked to my skin. Hurry up. Can't we wait a few minutes? Hurry up. Why do we have to leave here every night? Who's Can't we sleep in? Orders. But why? 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 The, the Baron doesn't want any servants sleeping in.
your brain came from the skull of a murderer. And you still wanted to kill. But with the right brain. The brain of an intelligent man. A good man. Where do I find it? We'd like a room for tonight. Yes, madam. This way, please. The room will be ready in a few minutes. Some hot grog for the gentleman. It was a long trip. It's going to be worth it. I'm sure of it. I hope he can help me. He will. You must believe that. I want to, but I can't hold out much longer. I'm tired, Christina. Sometimes I wish I'd go to sleep and never wake up. Don't do it that way. You are not going to die. You will be helped by Baron Frankenstein. Tonight? Get the carriage now. See the Baron. I am Baron Frankenstein. Oh, well, my name is Halpert, Paul Halpert. This is my wife, Christina. Oh, please. Thank you. I hope you'll forgive us for intruding on you at such a late hour. Oh. Well, allow me. Right over there, please. Your husband appears to be quite ill. What brings him out on a night like this? A matter of life and death. Of life and death? Yes, you were right, Baron. My husband is ill, critically ill. We've come here to ask your help. I don't understand that. I'm not a physician. We know that. We've heard about your work. I, I still don't understand. We've heard you can create life. If that is true, you must also be able to prevent people from dying. I'm afraid facts have a peculiar way of becoming distorted, Mrs. Halbert. Well, it is true I uh, was once involved in certain experiments with animals, uh, research on prolonging the span of life. Uh, but as for humans, uh, uh, that kind of experimentation is against the law. We're not here to spy. If you're concerned about ethics... There's really nothing to be ethical about. Well, then, if it's a matter of money, here. I have my jewels. Everything we possess. You are placing an exaggerated value on my lack of knowledge. Baron, please. I have this. You have good hands. Are you an artist? A sculptor. You will help him. I wish I could. But I'm afraid I cannot work miracles. I suggest you take your husband back to the village, Mrs. Halbert. Any physician can do more than I can. 
You're telling us to leave. days and if you live again three days maybe less I'm sorry it's all I can do he can't die Doctor, you're a man of influence. He will listen to you. Who will listen to me? Baron Frankenstein. Frankenstein? He could keep Paul alive. Believe me, if I were not sympathetic with your despair, madam... Surely I... you've heard of Frankenstein's experiments. The stories I have heard, I have chosen to disregard. For your own good, I would suggest you do the same. You have just finished telling me there's no hope. I was just trying to be realistic, Mrs. Halpert. Believe me, I understand your desperation. Is it a violation of a doctor's ethics to admit it's possible? Someone has found the secret of life and death. If such a secret existed, the medical profession would know it. Does the medical profession know everything? Does it, doctor? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life. Amen. Mrs. Halpert, somehow I feel guilty. That's very charitable of you, Baron. Unfortunately, your sense of guilt will not bring my husband back. Come back before sunrise and finish the job. I must close the grave. Leave it open until sunrise. I'm taking a chance if they find out.
would you have my luggage brought down, please? I'll be leaving in about an hour. Yes, madam. Could I have some of those flowers? Of course. Take them all. Thank you. I'm sorry. Your journey ended so unhappily. Thank you. You've been very kind. I've had your luggage put in the carriage. I will have it brought around whenever you are ready. I'll be ready as soon as I've seen the police. Is something wrong, madam? Yes. And if you'll be good enough to tell me where I can contact... Another Stein. No, two more Steins. Quickly. That man over there. I saw him at the funeral. Isn't he the caretaker? Something of the sort. He earns his living by preparing and tending the graves. I hope you will forgive my disturbing you. But there is a question I'd like answered. Why wasn't my husband's grave properly closed? Oh, Halpert, but... I believe you were at the funeral. Halpert? Oh, 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 of course, certainly. Why wasn't the grave closed? Would you believe it, madame? I was on my way to do just that. Well, I'm afraid you're a few hours late. The grave has already been violated. Why? Oh, no, that is impossible. No, it must be your imagination. I don't believe the police will think it is my imagination. Nor do I think they will take a light view of your leaving a grave unsealed all this time. I'm sure they have laws about that. P please, madame. It was not my fault. I had instructions. What do you mean, instructions? From whom? The name does not matter. It matters to me. I'm sure it will matter to the police. Oh, please. I beg you, madame. It is the only work I know. The name of the person. Baron Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein instructed you not to seal the grave? It's the truth. This is a drunken lie. I swear to you. I was paid well to say nothing. If you go to the police... Under the circumstances, that is the last place I'd want to go. What are you doing here? At the funeral. When you told me you had a sense of guilt, I didn't believe you. I know now I was wrong. I'm afraid I do not understand. Keeping up this pretense is useless. I saw the gravekeeper at the inn. He told me everything. What are you talking about? He told me you were the one who paid him to leave the grave unsealed. But do you believe the rantings of a, of a drunken sot? I might not have. Except for this. The locket. It was buried with my husband. I found it outside the grave. How did it get there? Unless you changed your mind. Mrs. Halbert, take my advice. Go back to your family. Stop looking for miracles. Oh, no. Let me see. He's him. dead. He's buried. You saw it with your own eyes. Now, will you please leave? What have you done with him? Who's up there? Your name is Halbert. If you remember, 
and understand. Lift your hands. You can think. You can remember. Your brain is alive again, Halpert. It can function. It has intelligence. If you wanted life, then I have given it to you. Yours was the brain that I needed. And it's the brain that makes it all work. Now listen. Do what I tell you. Sit down. Any closer. to me. He's not to blame. He did what we asked him to do. 
We had no right to ask him to commit a crime against God. The life you had was brief, but it was decent and good. Now, don't destroy everything now because of a hideous face and grotesque body that aren't yours. Please. Robbing graves, Baron, is a serious offense. I will have to place you under arrest. You have your job to do. And so have I. And I don't think either of us would let anything stand in the way of fulfilling our respective destinies. Time is of small matter. You see, there's always tomorrow. First time I met Frankie. Oh. Thanks for the lift, Frankie. <sighs> Good evening and welcome to another KBSI Creature Feature. I am your hostess and companion, Misty Brew. Right, Frankie? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, KBSI presents The Evil of Frankenstein. It is a spooky spoof about how Frankie here got his start from humble beginnings. <laughs> and how he was sort of pulled together by Baron Frankenstein. Poor Baron, he is so misunderstood by the townspeople. <laughs> now, Frankie, settle down. I won't let him hurt you. Good boy, good boy. Anyway, the folks in the T-O-W-N want to K-I-L-L -L in Baron, and you know who. So sit back, relax, and get ready for it. The evil of Frankenstein. Oh, it is great to see you, human creatures. See you next time.